Hey coach, I'm so excited you found our YouTube channel. Let me know how I can help. Um, if you click up above or down below, you'll find other resources, everything that you would want to become a better basketball coach. Go check out ttroops.com. That is the one-stop shopping for basketball coaches. It's resources, it's practice plans, it's how to deal with parents, it's how to deal with NBA guys, which was a good one. Um, let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach on this journey. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, welcome to High School Hoops. I got it right. I almost said Coach Unplugged. High School Hoops, episode 91. We're going to have to do a special little something when we get to 100. But um, so before we jump in, a couple things. First of all, go over and check out Dr. Dish, the number one shooting machine on the market. Mention High School Hoops, and they'll give you $300 or $350 off your next purchase. Um, not the home version, but all the other ones. And then also go over and check out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better. Um, we're going to talk about all the benefits. We, last week, we talked about all the benefits, pluses and minuses of, of, um, of COVID-19. We should have added that I've had a lot of time to put a lot of stuff up on Teach Hoops. That should have been one of the pluses. But um, so go over and check it out. Um, yeah, so go do that. All right, what are we talking about this week, Coach? Uh, we're kind of going to build around a, this this topic for a couple weeks uh, just because of, of the current situation of what we can and can't do with our players. Um, I got this idea. I just read a book. I read a book uh, about Car Carly Lloyd. Carly Lloyd is a very successful woman soccer player, and she talks about these five pillars that she had as a player with her trainer, and I think they're very important to think about in the basketball mind, and so I want to introduce those and then be able to talk about them in the next couple weeks and how and what we can do to support our players with some of those pillars that are very valuable in the basketball circuit. So um, the, 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 the five pillars are, uh, the first pillar is mental toughness. Uh, the second pillar would be um, the way that they see the game. Uh, the third pillar would be uh, their overall skill. Uh, the fourth would be their physical fitness. And I'm trying to think of the last one. I don't know if I can remember the last one. I'll have to go back and think about what okay. the last pillar is later on. But maybe there, we'll, there, have, it's, maybe it's we'll one, have that it's, for it's, you next week. We'll see. Um, it's one that I know that we can't not really ultimately control right now. So it's one we can't really discuss anyways. And okay. so the whole idea is the next two weeks is to talk about the two things that we can support our players and help them control okay. this time. Yep. And so um, the two things as coaches that we can control, if you're doing a great job building a relationship with your players through this whole thing, and every time you're a coach, anytime you're a coach and working with kids, you, your number one thing is to build relationships with them, is to remind them that the two things that they can control to becoming a complete basketball player is, number one, developing their skill, and number two, their physical fitness. So this week we're going to talk about ways and how we can keep skill development going on with our players doing COVID-19. Right. So, so, so again, I think, yeah, so let's talk about skill. So I think every kid can work on their individual basketball skills by themselves. There's plenty of stuff out there. I don't think there's anything that they can't do um, that there's <laughs> the, what I think is unique is they live in this world where there's YouTube and there's all sorts of stuff that if you want to become a better ball handler, if you want to become a better shooter, if you want to do those kind of things, that's those skill sets are out there for you to find. It's just going to take a little bit of digging. Um, but I think there's no reason for every basketball player that's playing right now, not to come back a better shooter, not to come become, come back to be, uh, you know, a better ball handler with both hands. Um, and probably, you know, in that skill set to be able to have some moves, a move and a counter move that you and I always talk about. I don't think when you have two months off and you're literally not responsible for virtually, you know, very little as far yes. as school, you should be a, be, you should become a better shooter and a better ball handler. You don't even, I mean, and if you don't have a hoop and you're in lockdown and you don't even have a hoop, you should become a better ball handler. Cause that's a skill set that you can work on. Um, I mean, that's kind of my theory. That's what I'm going to be when I'm able to have contact with my guys. That's, that's what I'm going to push with them. Those skill sets to them. What do you think, Coach? I, I think I, I am noticing kids around the community even now. There's, you know, one person that hoops. People are, you know, shooting. And, uh, you know, if you have a hoop at home, that's definitely getting shots up is always the mo one of the most important things. But it, it, we still have a lot of kids in certain areas that are very limited to getting to a basketball hoop right now. 
So right. ultimately, number one is, um, you know, providing, um, you know, ball handling, you know, um, getting those resources to them. Um, you know, that's uh, an avenue of how you do it, whether it's Google Classroom, Remind, whatever you want to do, giving them a tool. But like you said, in an area of way of now, the 21st century, they can look up ball handling workouts anywhere they want. They can go to your your YouTube channel. It doesn't make a difference. There's yep. So and and the thing there. is, as a coach, I think the one thing, and, and again, it depends on the rules. Like in Wisconsin, we can't have contact with them until school's out. But once that's over and once I'm able to have contact and send them workouts and do those kind of things, then I'm going to hold them accountable. Like I'm going to want to see what, when are you doing the workout? Let me see the beginning of your workout. Let me see the end of your workout. Well, those kind of things. When, once I figure out, once I figure out the world, I'm not even, I'm not even sure what can, what's considered five contact days. What's not all the rule stuff. I have to figure out in the next four or five weeks or six weeks or whenever before we can have contact. Um, but once I can do that and once I can use those specific dates, then I'm going to actually want to see what is your work being done. Um, so I just got to figure out the legal, the rules behind that. But um, like in school, like the only way that they're going to learn if I'm teaching them logs or trig is that they do the problems and I give them feedback and then they go do it again and then I give feedback. So I think that that two way street is really important. And it feels like we're living in a one way world right now where, you know, I spit something out and then they do it. And it's not, there, there's not this happening that the, the, the two way, the two way communication that needs to happen for the growth to happen on the skill work and, you know, for, you know, all that stuff. Um, what else, anything else for you? Um, I just think it's a constant reminders of the importance of these are things that they can control. Yeah, the other yes. thing that I did, I think uh, the um, because they don't have a lot of things that they can control right now. So giving them some sense of ownership and knowing that they can control their basketball skill set and being able to get better at the game that they love and still be connected is something right. very empowering for a person. Mm -hmm. The last thing I've realized is the last pillar is character, which is you know, um, if you're building relationships and you're working with your players, hopefully that character piece is always involved in what you're doing. So again, um, just, you know, just constantly reminding them to be working on those skills, you know, and then depending on your contact, as you said it perfectly, it's like, well, how do you manage that and do that? I think right now we're kind of don't know exactly what that looks like right no, now. No, I mean, I, I, I think right now it's, about it's on my list to talk to my athletic director and talk to the W. I mean, I got to figure out what is a con what is a not, what does a contact day look like versus what is, you know, I don't even know. I mean, it's so weird. It's just a, my theory is they should just, once we can have contact with them, then they should just open. I mean, I'm not going to literally be in a gym with them probably. So I think me communicating and sending workouts and them sending things but should be legal, but I, I, to be honest with you, I don't know. It's like, I need to figure out the compliance. Um, right. Yeah. All right. What's the full time out? You got anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think that's I it. I mean, I mean, I can't think of another skill set that they can work on by themselves. Passing. I, I, I bought a bounce back thing for my son, but I'm not a big fan on that. That's going to make him a better passer. Um, from a passing skill set. A, a lot of really good passing at a higher level. And what we talk about high school is having a sense of vision and timing. And you can't really have vision and timing unless you have other players involved with you. At this point in their career, they should be able to do a chest pass, a bounce pass with one, two arms, and say that it's all about vision, knowing when to do it. You know, it's a, it's a witness. It's something that they, they can't really work on their own unless they really want to be good behind the back to pass. Like, um, you know, uh, you know, some of those players practice against the wall and stuff. I mean, if they really want to become a – Yeah, and, and, and some of that's fine, but it's just yeah. like – it's kind of like the layup lines. It's like, great, that was good in the 50s, but I'm not sure that's going to make you a better player. Um, all right, so we have a full time out this week. Uh, last basketball book you read? Oh, the one I was just reading. What's the name of the one I sent you? Uh, that's I'm the it too. Feinstein's book. Yeah, it's uh, Feinstein's. It's Feinstein's book. It's about like the mid majors. Um, I love it. 
It's really good. I don't know what the it name reminds of the book me, is. It reminds me like high school basketball in college. It's what good. it reminds me of though is the book he wrote about the Patriot League a little bit. Um, I never read a, that one. Yeah, that's a really good one too about like the, the Patriot League and kind of he was in the he, he basically but it's like the Ivy but it's a little and you know, they started giving scholars. Anyway, it's similar to that. It's like it's not it's not the North Carolina Dukes he's following. He's following all these other teams that, you know, um, it's really good. It's I don't remember the name of it. Um, I am currently reading is uh, Think Like Butler or Lead Like Butler, which is about the Butler athletic department around the time when Brad Stevens went to the national championship back to back. Um, and I know you're a huge Brad Stevens fan. I am. Um, but, but Brad, really if cool you're about- listening, I want you on. If anybody knows <laughs> Brad, if anybody has a friend that knows Brad, <laughs> literally, cool about- I will the- walk to Boston to have Brad on the podcast. <laughs> uh, lead like Butler is that all the Butler athletic programs had the same five pillars, which is super cool. And you learn about them and how to be a really good leader. It's good for anybody that's in leadership role. Um, I look at it. Um, for multiple things that I do in my life. It's a great read. I think I have about two more chapters left. So I know it's, I, we've had this discussion, but I wish I could read more, but it makes me fall asleep. Yeah. So I, I, I love be audio books. Cause I can be yes. able to take my kids for walks and read at the same time. Yep. And then and the, the, the great thing is you can put one AirPod in and leave the other one out so you can hear them, but still listen. For sure. I, I but sometimes that. I just want to tune them out anyways. <laughs> parenting 101 look at this free parenting advice on yes. high school hoops free parenting advice all you right have to have you have to learn how to become a free parent you have to become a good parent to be a good basketball coach too yes you're not doing it, you're gonna you have to learn how to compartmentalize for sure <laughs> yeah, all right, right. Till, till next week hey coach so glad you enjoyed that video let me know how i can help um click up above or down below find out teachhoops.com for coaches who want to get better uh, there's a 14 day free trial as we speak. Not sure how long that will last. Um, one stop shopping for basketball coaches. So go over and check it out. I've been there. I know what you're going through. Won lots of championships, won lots of rings. Um, let me know how I can help you become a better basketball coach.